I want to lose weight, but I also want to feel good about myself. I want to feel like I accept my body and I love my body, but I want to fit into my pants. I don't know what to do. We're walking and talking. We're walking and talking. We're walking and talking. We're walking and talking with Helen Ryan. Hey, walkers and talkers. If you're walking outside or inside or on the elliptical or treadmill or even an indoor bike with me today, just start a little bit slow, not too fast, just to give yourself a warm up. If you're listening while doing something else or driving, just hang in here with us. When we breathe, go ahead and breathe with us. When we roll our shoulders, go ahead and roll your shoulders. And we'll try to find and release any tense spots together, no matter what we're doing. Sounds good? Here we go. Pick up just a little bit of pace and then take a deep breath in through your nose and exhale through your mouth. And one more time, deep breath in through your nose and exhale through your mouth. Give those shoulders a little bit of a roll, roll them backwards and then roll them forwards. One more time, let's go backwards and let's go forward again. Hold on to this pace. If you're listening to this version without music, if you ever want to do it with background walking music, hop over to the other version. And if you're driving and you don't want to listen to music, then go listen to the one without music, whichever one floats your boat. Today, we're going to talk about the dilemma and the difference between wanting to lose weight, but also wanting to learn to love your body and appreciate your body. We have two kind of distinct caps, right? There's a body positivity movement where we want to accept ourselves 100% and everything is fabulous and we love our bodies no matter what size they are and we don't want to think about losing weight. And then there's the other camp that can go a little bit to extremes, which is more losing weight, hardcore, exercising hardcore and wanting to fit into a certain size. And guess what? There's nothing wrong with either of them. But in the best of both worlds, we would be able to merge the two and find what works for us. Pick up a little bit of speed now. Feel those legs are nice and strong. Shoulders are relaxed. Hands are relaxed. And if you don't know, at the halfway point, I put in a bell, no matter which version you're listening to. That way you can turn around if you want and head back. These walks are only about 20 minutes, but I have some walks that are longer, about 40 minutes. So that's really helpful in that case. Hold on to the pace and just feel how good it feels to move. So whether you're in the camp of accepting yourself 100% as you are and not making any changes, or you want to lose some weight and do something different with your body, they're both okay. Body positivity shouldn't mean that you don't want to take care of your health. You want to love yourself, you want to accept yourself, and you want to make sure that you're healthy. Now, if you're younger, and I tell you, as you get older, you start to lose more muscle mass, and that could set you at bigger risk for falls and injuries, and potentially osteoporosis, that's not going to ring any alarm bells with you, right? You're just going to go, yeah, well, I have like 30 years. But if you start now, if you start today, and you start with walking, And then you start doing some weightlifting or Pilates or something that's going to give you a little bit more strength overall. That's going to be amazing for your health as you get older. We need to look at the big picture. We need to think about what's going to happen to us when we're older. If you're trying to lose weight, you want to make sure that you don't lose weight too fast to where you lose muscle mass because you will lose some muscle mass with almost every quote unquote diet that you're on, every time you cut your calories, you will lose some muscle. You want to make sure that you're working out with weights in order to keep the muscle or try to maintain as much of it as you can. That was a a digression on my part, but I just felt it was important to talk about because guess what? I'm 55. I've been losing muscle for quite some time now. And the last couple of years, I haven't been consistently lifting weights and I need to get back to it. Okay. Now we're going to go return back to our subject. We have about one more minute going to pick up a little bit more pace now. 
And why don't we take a deep breath in just for good measure? Taking care of your health is the number one priority. So let's think about how we can do that if we don't want to lose weight. If you are what society considers fairly overweight, you can still be healthy. I know many, many people who are healthier than their quote unquote thinner counterparts because they do take better care of their health. That you can be absolutely, you can be healthy. And that should be your number one focus. If your cholesterol is creeping up there, if you don't feel good, if you are pre diabetic, which I have been for many years, then you may want to think about that you do need to lose weight for your health. If your feet hurt, and you want to not put as much weight on your feet or your knees, then you do need to think about losing weight for your health. But you don't need to think about, oh, I want to have a six pack. I want to be super ripped. I want to be super lean. But again, if you want that, that's perfectly okay. And let's slow it down just a little bit, not too much. Deep breath in through your nose. Do a little dance. Get down tonight. I don't know who sings that song. Da, 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 um, da, down tonight. Well, we're not going to get down. Well, we could get down, but sometimes I just can't get back up. We're going to go a little bit faster again. And you want to be a little uncomfortable now. Start to break a little sweat. Doesn't have to be super intense. Just enough to feel that you're moving and feel that you're alive. Oh, I'm going to sing again, so I won't do it. Born to be alive. Do you remember that, Patrick Hernandez? Yes, I love that song. I love the 80s. That might have been late 70s. I feel that body positivity has come around because we as women especially, but also it applies to men, but I feel like it's more towards women, is that society expects us to look a certain way. Especially Western society, we have to be thin, thinner the better. We have to do this. We have to have a six pack. And you'll see in all these ads and, and all these fad diets, get a flat belly, the flat belly diet. Well, if you weigh 200 pounds, you can't get a flat belly in a week, not even with surgery. It's not possible. It really depends on how lean you are, how much muscle mass you have, and how much fat you have. That all balances out. And only that and training your abs, the combination of all of that is the only thing that's really going to reveal those abs and give you, quote unquote, the flat abs. So pushing all that scam stuff away, let's go a little bit faster. You're going to run away from the the scams and the people feeding you lies. And we all want the lies. I know I want the lies too. And I did an episode, I think it was episode six, where I talk about lies and scams and what really works. But they all want to sell us, you know, some kind of a dream. And the only thing that works, as we've talked about, is to take it slow and just take it step by step. You can lose weight faster. It depends what your goal is and how motivated you are because doesn't it all come down to motivation? Okay, faster again now. Here we go, a little bit faster. I want you to push it. I'm gonna push it. 30 seconds. Breathe. Feel your body moving. Feel yourself getting healthier. And we're not gonna get healthier just a second. But every time you move your body, you're doing something great for it and your mood. Okay, 15 seconds. Oh, it reminds me of a story I'm going to have to tell you, but hold on to that pace right there and breathe. Relax those shoulders a little bit. And we got five more seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Slow it down just a little bit. All right, I'm going to go back to that story because I'm going to forget. When I was really active in the training community and I was involved in different groups and, and different organizations, different forums, And I still remember this really shocked me. I don't think I've talked about it before, but I might have. Fellow trainers were talking about people who come to the gym and then they go home and then they eat cookies or whatever, and they don't follow what the trainer thinks they should be eating. And there was a youngest trainer and he said, you know, I just, I'm wasting my time. They're not going to listen to what I say. And it's just, you know, I don't want those kind of clients. And I was really shocked because you're not wasting their time. They're at the gym, they show up, they work out, they build some muscle, they might gain some stamina, it improves their moods, and long-term, 
their health is getting better. What do you mean? You're wasting your time. You're the trainer. You don't have the right to say they're wasting your time. You're there to serve them. Why in the world would you think that because they do something when they get home that doesn't fit with what you want to do, why is that not okay? And I was really shocked and I was actually kind of hurt because I thought about all those people who have gone to him over the years and maybe he just dismissed them because they didn't do what he wanted. They're not there to be bikini bodybuilding models or you know, competition. They're there because they want to get healthier and they want someone to help them along. You're going to go just a little bit faster. Roll those shoulders out. As always in life lately, everybody's divided into different camps and only their way is the right way. And that's where we really need to talk to each other, accept each other, and understand that it's okay to tell people you want to lose weight, but it's also okay to tell people I'm really happy just the way I am. And yeah, I think a bigger portion of us, especially women, are not happy. Because I lost over 80 pounds, I always have this flap on my lower stomach. But when I gain weight, like I gain those 10 pounds living in this mold house, which was episode 12, I think I talk about it. I don't like it because then I can feel my stomach flap more when I walk when I'm wearing looser pants or skirt. And I don't like that feeling. I also don't like the feeling when I'm cycling and I weigh more and I have to pull my butt up the hill and my butt weighs more than I'm used to. (laughs) It's a lot more work for me to pull that butt up the hill. I will never have the body that I wish I could have because I love the look of muscles. I love to be lean and I can be somewhat lean, but because I do have a lot of extra skin that kind of went out the window. So I've turned the focus on accepting me for who I am, the scars that I carry, which is my excess skin. I've really focused on appreciating what my body can do instead of always going, oh, I don't look like this. I can't do that. Okay, slow it down just a little bit. Accept what we can do today, right? Deep breath in through the nose. Now you're going to go faster, quite a bit faster for a shorter period of time. And go. Head on down the road. That was the whiz, wasn't it? It was. I just waved my hand in the air and... I have hit 10,000 steps. Steps? I have hit 10,000 steps. Let's just say I've hit 10,000 steps. About 25 more seconds now. Pick it up, pick it up. Okay, 20 seconds. Now I want you to push it faster. Push it harder. Stay with it. Push it. And don't drive faster. If you're driving, don't drive faster when I say push it. Hold on to it and slow it down. Not Again, not too slow. Appreciating your body for what it can do. Accepting your body for its limitations. We all have limitations. And realize that a lot of the influencers we see and a lot of the, the bodies that we would like to be like, they also don't look like that all the time. They look like that in photo shoots. And of course, there are there's Photoshop and other things that work to help people look a certain way. And we need to help each other realize that our bodies are fine and our bodies are what they are. And our bodies are testament to what we have been through in life. The, the internal and external scars. I am an emotional overeater. So in the past, especially when I was upset, I would eat. And instead of having some, for example, instead of drugs, I would eat food. So I will always carry that with me because that is who I am and that is what happened to me and that is my story. Pick up a little bit of pace now. And while we're going faster, I want you to think about your story. Your body tells a story. And that's why if we have smile lines, if we have wrinkles around our eyes, crow's feet, we just lived a good life and we laughed. I don't have very many wrinkles on my forehead, but that's because (laughs) I've spent so many years in front of my computer working on boring projects. And so it's like natural Botox. It's nature's Botox because there's no expression on my face. I have wrinkles around my eyes and around my mouth, but my forehead is smooth as a baby's butt. 
because nothing surprises me when I'm working. Hold on to your pace now. About 15 more seconds. Pick it up. I sounded like a valley girl there, didn't I? Seconds. Push it, push it. And slow it back down. Going to hit a steady pace. And we're going to feel for any tense spots. Shoulders, hands, shake out those hands a little bit. Shake out your feet. See if your back feels tight. See what you can do for that. And hold on to a moderately brisk pace. What can we do to bring those ideologies closer together? If you're always working out and you're afraid of everything you put in your mouth, that's not good and that's not healthy either. Finding the balance, finding the something that gives you joy. If you go to your child's birthday party, you have a birthday party and you don't eat a minuscule piece of cake ever because you don't, you're frantically afraid of, of gaining weight, that's not a good way to live. I had a friend, a former friend who was a fitness instructor, and she would bring water to class when she taught classes like spin, but she wouldn't drink it because she didn't want to get on the scale afterwards. Who weighs himself after them? I don't know, after spin class. Because I can lose three pounds of, of water weight from all the darn sweat. But she wouldn't drink it because she didn't want to see the effect on the scale. That is not healthy physically or emotionally. And she obviously wasn't in a good place. As I talked about in the last episode with triggers, the sugar, just make sure that you don't trigger into a negative spiral and negative emotions. And try to be a little gentler on yourself. And you can't always, especially if you have kids or busy life, you can't always fit in the kind of workout you want. So if you're in that camp of, I want to exercise as much as I can, I want to eat like super clean, but you're not enjoying it. If you're enjoying it, okay, then maybe it's okay. But a lot of times you deprive yourself and then you're not enjoying anything and you're not enjoying it. And if you say, oh, you know, I love my body, I accept myself for who I am, but then you secretly inside don't, then you're setting yourself and people around you up for failure because you're not really happy. You're projecting something that you are not. It's not authentic. It's not who you are. If you don't like the skin flapping around your stomach, like I don't like it, it's not going to feel good and you're not going to be in a good place. So do what you can for your health and do what you can for your body. But find something that will make you feel good, that will make you feel happy. I like to work out hard. I like to spin hard. I like the way it feels. I like the way it makes my brain feel. I feel strong. I feel empowered. I love to lift weights. I love to use the TRX. I love the way my body moves when I'm doing like the suspension training. It just feels amazing. But that's not for everybody. But walking and, and strengthening your core even doing some basic push-ups on the stairs, those are all things that are really good for you, but that everybody can do even if you don't like exercise. We're going to go for about 15 more seconds. Don't hate on other people who aren't where you are. Try to understand where people are coming from. And slow it down a little bit here. Because I have another Tori. Tori. Hello, Tori. If you are a Tori and you're listening, give me a shout out. I have another story to tell you. We're going to go three minutes, just a little faster, not a sprint, not an interval, but just a little bit uncomfortable. I think most of us feel that it's okay to talk badly about quote unquote thin people or skinny people, right? I have done that, and I was actually put in my place by a very skinny friend at one point, and I'm really glad that she made me aware of it. I posted a meme years ago. In a Picasso painting, I would be the painting, and Kate Moss would be the brush or something like that. And she private messaged me, and she said, because she's always struggled to gain weight, which most of us think, hey, that'd be great, but it's not so great if you're always struggling. And people make fun of thin people much more than they make fun of overweight people. Because somehow it's okay to make fun of thin people, but some thin people are thin and they don't want to be that thin. They feel uncomfortable. They've been made fun of. And she said, you know, why is it okay for you to make fun of me because I'm skinny? 
I can't gain weight. And that really opened up my eyes. No, it's not okay. It's not okay. When I was traveling, I was try or I met up with this woman and then uh, another friend of hers. And then she said something like, oh, well, like skinny like her, like talking about me. Like, first of all, I'm not skinny. And I wasn't skinny. I was thinner because I was traveling. And I was super happy because I like to travel. Hold on to your pace. But the way that she said it was like, like I was, you know, like, oh, she's skinny. And I wasn't skinny, but, you know, that shouldn't be okay. Would I say someone, oh, she's fat? No, I would never say that because I don't look at people as being one way or another what they look like. I just like them or not based on their personality. Think about the words that we use to each other and think about how we can support each other. When Adele lost a lot of weight, there were people who commented negatively on it. Why? Why can't we just celebrate whatever someone wants to do? I have a friend who lost a lot of weight and got in shape. He got a really good shape. And he said people were telling him like, oh, are you sick? They were kind of like making snide remarks like, yeah, you've lost weight, but there's something wrong with you and you don't look good. But he did look good. He just looked different. And he was happy with what he'd done. A little bit faster now. Hold on to that pace. And that's not okay. If someone works really hard to do something that makes them happy inside, it's not okay to shit all over that, is it? No. And slow it down just a little bit. You can be happy about your body. You can support body positivity. I support it. I'm learning as I get older to accept myself for who I am and think about all the things that my body can do and all the things it has done. And some people want to make change. I want to lose the 10 pounds I gain because I want to fit back into my clothes. I don't want to buy new clothes. I hate shopping for clothes. It doesn't matter what size I was. I don't like, I'm short. I have short legs. Every of uh, the jackets, the arms are all too long. I used to shop in the kids department because my arms, <laughs> my arms were so short. But it's okay, whatever you want to do, just as long as you're healthy and take little steps and try to remove all that negativity, the negativity around food, the negativity around exercise, work those things into a way that makes you feel good. Whether you feel good as a bigger size person, whether you feel good as a smaller person, it doesn't matter. And we all have seasons in our lives where we're bigger or smaller. When you're pregnant, most of us tend to get pretty darn big, right? My stomach was gigantic. And then there are other times when you're in college and you don't have a lot of money that you're thinner because you don't have money for food. Or when you're older, you're not as hungry, so maybe you don't eat as much. That's just a season in your life. And I'm not going to sing Seasons in the Sun because that song, <laughs> that song makes me cry. If you've never heard that song and you want a good cry, go listen to it. It is beautiful and terrible at the same time. 45 seconds, I really want you to push it. This is our last bit of work. Last bit of harder work. Now, do you know what you can do? I know you're not going to want to, but write a couple of love notes to yourself or write down some things that you like about yourself because there's got to be something that you, you really like about yourself. You have amazing features. You've got great skin. You've got beautiful eyes. You've got a great smile, got a good personality. And having a good personality, by the way, is not an insult. 15 more seconds, really push it. I've had people tell me when I was heavier, oh, you know, well, she has a good personality. You know what? I'm a damn nice person. It doesn't matter how much I weigh. Well, that was angry. And slow it back down now. Write down the things that you like about yourself. There is something. Some people have beautiful hands. I don't have beautiful hands. Some people have great shoulders. Some people have great legs. My grandmother had great legs all of her life. She was more top heavy, but I just remember she had these, these, these just slender legs, but they were a little muscular. They were great, beautiful, beautiful legs. What do you have that, that you like? What do you have? Think about it and write it down. You got to write it down because writing it down makes it real. One of my friend's daughters writes motivational sticky notes and sticks them up on her mirror. And then she can look at them every day and then she can change them out. So as you grow and change, 
you can change out those sticky notes. Now, if you don't have any privacy or if you just have a little piece of a closet, you can slap some sticky notes on the back there behind your wall, behind your clothes, not behind your wall. It'd be cool if you had a secret room, but very few of us do. So behind your clothes on the wall, have a little sticky, sticky note system or just write some notes down for yourself on your phone. Doesn't really matter. Just appreciate who you are, appreciate where you are, but also try to make some changes in your life for the better. Now we're going to slow it down just a little bit. And I've got some great guests coming up on future episodes, and I can't wait to share them with you, especially one I think you're really going to resonate with what he has to say. And you'll be amazed because you'll learn that you can actually eat pretty much what you want. And he'll show you how to do it. He'll tell you how to do it because it's not video. Slow it down a little bit more now. Roll those shoulders. I roll them to the front. And if you've been doing a little bit of a workout, a little bit of a walk when you get back or when you stop, make sure you do a little bit of a cool down. I'm a really a bit, a bit of today. I actually, when I, when I wrote my book and I edit my first book and I edited it, I realized how many times I wrote bit, a little bit, a little bit, a little bit. And I also say a little bit. Because it's just like a little bit is just enough for us to, it's bite size, right? It's enough for us to do something. It's fun size. A little bit is fun size. I always call myself fun size because I'm five feet tall. Slow it down a little bit more. Oh, I did it again. How about this? Slow it down more. Ah, there we go. I also think I'm going to put together some meditations for you, like short ones that you can do after your walk. So stay tuned for that. And you can also join my Facebook group, which, if I can go back in my memory bank, is imperfectlyhealthy.group. I've got tons of free recipes, mini challenges that are really doable that change certain things in your life, not necessarily just about weight, but watching less TV. There's a bunch of these fun little challenges. So jump on over there and I will welcome you in. They're amazing people and super fun. Slow it down a little bit more. And then go listen to Seasons in the Sun if you want to have a cry. The only version I can listen to is the punk version. Cool it down now. Take a deep, 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 deep breath in. I'm going to pretend like we're in spin class. And exhale. And I'll see you next time.